Welcome everyone, welcome to a sort of new let's play. It's not really, well, it is a let's play in a way, but we'll be let's playing a demo of a game that I've been very, very, very interested in, uh, like a couple of years ago when it was first announced, or I can't even remember when. It's called Dead State. It's a turn-based survival game in a zombie apocalypse. Yes, yes, I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, a zombie apocalypse again. But this one actually, um, you know, concentrates more on the social aspect of things, of, you know, society breaking down and everything. Zombies, yes, they are there and they're a problem, but, you know... Um, and this is actually new. They've updated the demo a few times, I believe. And you can actually make your character now. Let's see what we can make. Ugh. Old... Ugh. Okay, well, whatever. Let's just take the nerd. He looks like a nerd. Custom? One. Okay. Appearance. Body. Yeah, there we go. Um, now, I will be playing through this demo. No variation yet. You have to remember that this is very early still. Well, actually not that early. The game is supposed to come out at the end of this year, I believe. 2014, somewhere. Um... And when I first play the, uh, the demo, John Smith is fine. Do you want to use a pre-made character or create a custom one? Let's do a custom one. Pre-made characters are not locked into any skill or stat choices when spending skill points. I want to do a custom character. Okay, so, uh, cons considering it's an RPG, it's a turn-based RPG, uh, you obviously get uh, lots of skills and stuff. Uh, strength, how physically strong the player is, determines carry weight, contributes to melee damage. Agility, how nimble a character is, determines combat evasion. Uh, vigor, how healthy a player is, determines total hit points, grants additional armor class points at rank 4 and above. Perception, how keen-eyed and quick to react the player is. Well, we have 14 stat points. Okay, let's let's be quite uh, beefy, I guess. Yeah, let's... Even though he's a nerd, so perhaps this is not the best thing. But hey, he'll be a, a melee guy, right? I actually might want to round this out like that. Okay, now, melee. How well the character deals with close enemies. Less AP required for melee uh, strikes. More damage caused in melee strikes. Greater ability to bash objects. What's this? Oh, you can uh, select a special thing. Player gains a 1 to 5%... Oh man, this is really difficult to read. Increased critical chance when hitting an enemy in the back. It's not really good. Player gains a permanent plus 5 to their armor class. That it looks nice. Uh, I want. Oh, there we go. And just select that one. Yeah, that's quite nice. Oh, and now it costs two to actually increase. Wow, that's uh, quite a lot. Well, we're not gonna do that. So that's quite a bit. Ranged leadership. How well the character is able to get others to follow their example. Dialogue skill ranges from reasoned to intimidating. Increases effectiveness of allies in combat. This is quite important, I think. I think this should be the main thing because your character is the leader. Allows for an ally of your choosing to bump up their move order and go next. Let's get this. Uh, improves party chance to hit undead by 25% for three rounds. Uh, keeps allies from going into a panic, removes them from one for three rounds. Well, I guess don't panic, really. Uh, then negotiation, how well the character convinces others to share their point of view. Dialogue skill ranged is from understanding con conniving, reduces morale decay. It's also quite like, important. All of these things... Survival, how well the character survives in an outdoor environment, fast travel on the area map, harvesting on the area map, actively avoid random encounters. You know, these are all quite important, um, but I think for this character it should be negotiation and such. The player's personality lifts the spirits of their fellows, earning an additional 5 morale per day. Yes, you will have to keep an eye out on morale. Your skills at getting people to work better in a crisis has reduced the upgrade repair time by 25%. That's pretty nice, but I want to have the morale one. Okay, and then maybe survival. Sounds kind of interested. Uh, interesting. Uh, medical, perhaps, as well. Maybe ranged. Distant enemies. Increased accuracy. Damage critical. You know what? I'm going to go for medical. There. Next. Ah. There we go. Stats. Perks. 110 HP, 9 APs, start. This will finalize your character build. Yes. 
All right. So when I first played this demo, I was a little bit underwhelmed, to be completely honest. Let me explain and let, let not that turn you off uh, from the game. Um, it was just a little clunky. Um, I was expecting it to be a little more polished. Perhaps I was expecting too much of the, um, of the demo, but we'll see. You wake up to the sound of people arguing. Your body is stiff and you can smell the unmistakable scent of rubbing, uh, rubbing alcohol. You feel like you've been sleeping off a horrible fever. The last thing you remember is the plane going down. Food? Who cares about food when we've got a huge hole in that fence? If we don't fix it, they're going to walk right in here. I know, Mom, but who's going to risk going out there? You? Me? Joel? I suppose I should be the one to go, being the cop and all. Kinda be nice if someone was watching my back. Not my René, that's for damn sure. Let's not panic yet, alright? Uh, and then you can, you know, say stuff. Hello, who are you people? Say nothing. Who the fuck are you people? Where am I? Who are you people? He's up! Easy. I realize you have no idea where you are right now, but you're safe. You're in the basement of a school. I'm Davis. This is Anita. You should thank your lucky stars that my daughter was here. Mom. That's Rene, Anita's daughter. Uh, hi. Good to see you're up, finally. Behind her is Elaine. She's still recovering. And that's Joel. That's me. I'm Joel. Officer Joel. I guess technically. I'd be Officer Oswald, but you can call me Joel. Heck, any of those will do. Okay, nice to meet you all. How can, now, can someone tell me what's happening? Do you remember the plane crash? Yeah, wish I had never gotten on that flight. Where's the rest of my family? Your family. I don't know how to tell you this. What are you saying? I'm sorry, there were only a few survivors, between the wreckage and the... Well, it was amazing that we were able to find anyone alive out there. No, no, this can't be happening. I'm just selecting responses. You poor thing. I'm deeply sorry for your loss, but I'm afraid there's some other things you have to be made aware of. You're in Texas, Central Texas, a town called Splendid. We're in the basement of the local school. This isn't where I belong. I can't stay here. I'm sorry to tell you, but you're pretty much stuck here. We all are. But don't worry, we have food, facilities, a generator, and it's secure. The hell I am? Hey, thanks for everything, but I am out of here. <laughs> you can't keep me down here. What? Are you going to stop me? Secure? What does that mean? I don't think you understand. Outside, it's not safe anymore. Everything's changed. You were on the last flight before they grounded the planes. They were trying to control the spread of a pandemic. It didn't work. Martial law was declared. Shelters were opened. People were evacuated. Those that stayed behind. Like me and the whole splendid police department. All three of us. We were just trying to get the last few people out of the area when your plane went down. Most of them were already... Well, you see the real danger out there right now is... There are things out there. Now's not the time. I agree. Look, this is a lot to take in. Why don't you come talk to me when you're ready? And, again, I'm sorry for your loss. The others go back to talking privately. Okay, welcome to Dead State. The world here is complex and dangerous, so let's take things simply at first. Please remember that if you ever get lost, simply save and exit the game. Find the game manual in the install direct, blah, 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 blah. For now, focus. Get your bearings. Use the middle mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. Um, hold it uh, to move, rotate until the camera. That's pretty nice. The WASD keys move the camera around, as well as the arrow keys. The camera can be rotated by using Q and E. Moving can be done by clicking the left mouse button on the desired location. That's us. A single click will make the character walk, while a double click makes them run. Once you've gotten used to moving and looking around, speak with Davis to continue. Okay, so... Yeah, this is this is the underground of the school we're staying in. And I'm really excited about all of this. Um, I just hope they will polish it up a bit so it's not as clunky. But let's see. Davis. Thank you're up for, uh, to, talk, uh, to talking about... Uh, Think you're up to talking about our situation now. <sighs> sure. Good, I'll get the others. Davis motions to Anita. What I'm about to tell you, it's going to be difficult to believe. In fact, it's hard to accept even when you've seen it with your own eyes. 
I'll say. I don't know if anything can shock me anymore. I'm not an idiot. I read all about that virus going around. Uh, okay, I don't know if anything can shock me anymore. Let me explain. The illness that was going around, it doesn't just kill or make people lose their mind. It might not even be a virus. It's the end of the world. Mom, we don't know that. Please, just tell me. The dead are coming back to life. Not all of them, but people that are bit or killed by them. They seek out and attack the living. From what we know, it's not just here. It's everywhere, all over the world. Come on, this is some sort of reality TV stunt or... This is some kind of apocalypse cult, is that it? I'm done here, fuck this, give me the key, I'm out of here. I see, I mean, it's difficult to believe. Okay, what are... Come on, this is some sort of reality TV stunt? Everybody's... yeah. <laughs> Nobody's saying anything. You're serious? I'm afraid so. What do we do? We don't know how long we're going to be here for, and the basement isn't really a long-term solution. We've got enough food to last us another week or so, but we're going to need to secure the entire school. What do we need to make that happen? Wait, are there dead people upstairs? Is that what you mean by secure? Not yet. The fence around the school was being refinished when the town was evacuated. That's whole, uh, there's whole sections missing, which... I've seen what's out there. We're not safe. If those things find out we're inside... If we want to move into the school upstairs, we're going to have to finish that fence. It's not completely down. With the proper supplies, we could fix it in a day. Can't get very far. We drain the fuel in the cars to power the generator. There's a hardware store over in Lano. It's a bit of a walk, but it's our best bet. You're going to want to bring back a toolbox and as many spare parts as you can. Getting that fence up is our only option. I know this is a lot to ask, especially given all you've been through, but we really don't have a choice. Wait, just the two of us? There's strength in numbers, someone else has to come. What kind of backwater town doesn't have a goddamn hardware store? <laughs> I can do that. Um, you know, I'd feel a bit better about this if we had a third person. I still remember the last time we went outside of Splendid. I don't know why I gave him such an accent. We're going to need someone to stay here and help me secure the windows and doors upstairs, but I can't volunteer anyone else. Don't even think about taking re my René. There's no way I'm letting my little girl go out there. Not sure why I, I have her as René either. I guess she's René? René? I don't know. Mom, please! I can take care of myself. And what if someone gets hurt? I'm the only one here with any medical training. Take me if you have to. I don't want to have to fight, but you don't have uh, don't drive a big rig for ten years without learning how to bust some heads. Oh no, you don't, Mom. If anything happened to you, I need someone who can fight. Anita, you're going with us. Don't take my mom. Can't you just? <sighs> okay, it's decided. You three go to the hardware store in Lano and get a toolbox and all the parts you can carry. We'll secure the first uh, school's first floor while you're gone. Understood. Let's go. Looks like you'll be heading outside. You don't want to do this unprepared. Left click on the survivor's back to close close to you in order to interact with it. Right, let's do that. And as you can see, uh, you've got a lot of, you know, dialogue and stuff in there. And it's not just dialogue. You act Oh my god, the uh, avatar I've picked. Um, it's not just the dialogue. I mean, everything you say and do affects the mood of the group. And this is the beauty of this game. This is why I'm so... Oh, there he is. This is why I'm so excited about it, apart from other things. You know, the whole strategy part and such. Having a base of operations and, and such. Um, the fact is, if you piss someone off, they will be pissed off at you. And if it's serious, I guess they might even attack you or run away or whatever. Or, you know, try to fight you for power. Because, for some reason, they immediately take you as the leader. So anyway, let's uh, click on the survivor's bag. Uh, it's, it's very weird why there's no sounds. I'm I'm going to... I guess there will be sounds now. Huh. Well, I've just picked at everything. This is the loot screen. The inventory of the character doing the looting is on the left, while the object or person being looted is on the right. Left-clicking on an item selects it. The arrows pointing both ways allow for selected items to be transferred back and forth, while the single arrow pointing to the left moves everything from the loot container to the looting character's inventory. When looting, pay attention to the weight listed on the looting's character. That's the amount of weight they've already, uh, they're have already they already carrying over here. 53 
and a half pounds. Each character has a maximum amount of weight they're able to carry, and once they're at the maximum, they won't be able to add any more. On the bottom of the looting character's clipboard are tags to separate the inventory. Click on the arrow pointing to the left to collect everything from the bag, then hit X. Now you have the items, but you still need to equip them. Press I to bring up the inventory screen, or click on the small backpack icon. Right, let's press I. There we go, that's our inventory. So as you can see, all this stuff is quite nice. This is your inventory screen. You'll notice the organizational tabs from the loot screen are still here. Start by equipping your character with some weapons. Grab the kitchen knife and drag it to the weapon 1 slot. And then grab the wrench and drag it to the weapon 2 slot. This will allow your character to swap between these two weapons in combat. So let's uh, do that. Why is there no sound? That's bizarre. There should be sound, I think. Next, grab the medical satchel. This is a special item that allows you to charge it with medical items so you can heal yourself and others out in the field. Place it into your item one slot. And grab the bandages and put them into the medical satchel to charge it. So you can see it has 0 out of 20. And if we put bandages in it, there we go. Bing! Now you're a little more equipped to face the outside world. Cl close the inventory screen. Then, not sure what else to do. Okay, anyway. Where are all the sounds? Sounds dangerous out there. I should check that back for a weapon. This is the first floor of the shelter, otherwise known as Splendid General School. You've got some items on you that are best left here before you go. Head to the room with the shelves immediately to your left and click on the shelving labeled Shelter Storage, which is here. Well, this is also different from what I remember. Yeah. Layout. This is the Shelter Storage screen, a variation on the loot screen, and is used for placing items in the shelter for later use. Since Dead State does not use food items to restore health, you won't be needing any food items outside the shelter. The same goes for fuel, parts, and luxury items. Select all your non-equipped items, then use the left-right arrow to transfer them. So, obviously, you will need food to survive, and luxury items to, you know, make everything nicer. Um... Oh, this is nicer now, yeah, than what I remember in the demo. Once they're there, press the stock button to save them in the shelter's permanent supplies for later use. Ah, don't panic at them not appearing. They're still counted in your shelter supplies. Oh, okay. But can you... can you take them out then? Hmm. That should clear up some weight in inventory space. Close the shelter storage window. Okay, now that you've uh, dropped off some items in storage, it's a good idea to check out your goals. Let's see goals. Yeah, they've definitely upgraded the demo quite a lot. The goal list is the way that experience is gained in the world of Dead State. Instead of killing, you have objectives to focus on to explore the world and keep yourself and your allies alive. So there we go. You know, you've got moods, jobs, what they're doing, their health and such. It's pretty, pretty nice. At the top of the goal list, you'll see what are known as reoccurring goals. These measure the amount of key items you've brought back and stocked at the shelter and are consistent throughout the game. Where? Reoccurring goals. Top of the goal list. Oh, this. Okay. Below that, you'll see a one-time objective to fix the shelter fence. Where? Shelter useful. Repair shelter fence. There we go. The objective will remain active until it's completed. Each time you complete a goal, you'll be rewarded a certain amount of skill points, and after 20 skill points, you'll get a stat point. In order to spend these, simply open up your character screen with C and click to distribute them. That's it for the goals. Alright. So anyway... Before you leave, try walking around the shelter and speaking with people. Individuals have their own particular locations they like to hang out in, and it's important to talk with them frequently to find out their wants and needs. Once you're ready to leave the shelter, Run out of the front doors and then uh, the blue colored area, that's the exit grid. Every area in the game has an exit grid, which are the only places you can access the world map. While you're standing on the exit grid, press M on the globe icon and the bottom of the screen to access the world map. So anyway, I'm sorry about so much babbling now. I know this was a slow start, but I'm really, really excited about this game. And I'm, I'm already seeing more polish from the demo than what I've uh, played a few months ago. So I'm hoping that combat and such will be more polished as well. But as you can see, this is our school. And I'm just so excited about this because this is our base of operations. And I will show you next time you actually, you know, can upgrade stuff, build it up, defenses, this, that, and so on. And then you go out into the world and loot 
uh, houses and such for supplies and so on. It's pretty damn awesome. So I will see you in the next uh, part of the demo. And this is also me asking you, my dear viewers and subscribers, if you would like to see me Let's Play Dead State when it comes out. I probably will, just for my own sake. But I just want to know if you would be interested in watching it. So please let me know that down below in the comments. And as I said, I will see you in the next turn. Bye-bye.